Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just revealed what's going on with our Iron Man Armor Wars movie during Marvel Phase 6, so we'll break it all down. There's a bunch of stuff they're bringing back, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Just starting with the big stuff first, they did confirm that Armor Wars is now going to be a movie in Marvel Phase 6 instead of a Disney Plus series. That's why they kept delaying it. They haven't been talking about it in a long time. It's mostly because of the budget. It's the first Marvel series that's actually gone upstream that way, with a lot of the Marvel Phase 4 Disney Plus series that we've gotten having started life as movies that they commissioned writers to develop a long time ago, and they just later decided to turn into series. Hi. I made macaroni if you want some. Moon Knight and the Hawkeye series are good examples of that. Like, they started as movies that Marvel commissioned a long time ago, and they just kind of sat on a shelf, and they decided they wouldn't be strong enough to be a movie compared to the other movies that they did. So they just wound up turning them into series. The reason Armor Wars turned into a movie is mostly because of budget, because Marvel typically caps the budget of their Disney Plus series at about $150 million. That's why they're usually only six episodes or nine episodes, but the six episode series are always a little bit longer, like 45 minutes per episode compared to like 30 minutes per episode for the nine episode series. They decided they needed way more than the typical $150 million to do all the Iron Man armors that they want to do during the movie, because the Armor Wars movie would largely have to be special effects start to finish. If they'd done it as a series, they'd have to do like five episodes of them walking and talking around, and then one episode with them wearing some armors, with a couple of the armors. So it wouldn't have felt very satisfying what people would have normally expected from an Iron Man Armor Wars series. Like, where is this armory? Why aren't they all going crazy? They are doing a version of the original comics story of Armor Wars. The only difference is that Iron Man was still around when that happened, and they already did part of the plot of that Armor Wars for the Iron Man 2 movie with the Justin Hammer storyline. In the comic version, Justin Hammer hires a bunch of people to steal Iron Man's technology and then runs amok, basically what you saw during Iron Man 2. The minor change, though, is that you have to imagine the end of Iron Man 3 with all of his armor showing up piloted by Jarvis. That was a little more in the vein of Armor Wars, where you have a bunch of his armor suits going crazy. But one of the other big differences with this new version that they're doing in Marvel Phase 6 is that one of the main villains will be Ultron, who will return, played by James Spader himself, or at least he's supposed to be played by James Spader this time. They actually just brought Ultron back as part of the big Disney Wish storyline that they did. Ah, uh, so this is where they keep the children. That's a weird opening line. Think fast! Seriously? Yeah, I didn't do anything. Oh, get out of my way! That was where all those Ant-Man scenes came from, where he was joking about the Thanos. Like, they actually paid off the Thanos scene. Look, before we start, let me address the elephant in the room. I've heard a lot of chatter out there asking why I didn't shrink down, go in, and, uh... <laughs> kill Thanos in a really creative way. First of all, gross. Secondly, it's much more complicated than that. Allow me to explain. If only we had the time. Avengers into the Thanos. They did bring Ultron back for the What If series as the Infinity Ultron, who gained all six Infinity Stones, turning himself into a living Infinity Gauntlet, embedding them in his chest. We got some of the craziest scenes in a Marvel series or movie ever. Ultron versus the Watcher, punching him across universes, chomping down, destroying entire galaxies. But that version of Ultron was played by Ross Marquand, who you remember either from The Walking Dead or as Red Skull during Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. That's why those characters sounded a little bit different, like Ultron during What If sounded a little bit different, and Red Skull during Infinity War and Endgame sounded just a little bit different. He did a pretty good job of approximating the performance of the original actors for those characters. But apparently because they upgraded Armor Wars to a movie, they have a movie-level budget, they can pay James Spader movie-level money to come back. The idea with Ultron returning, though, is that when Vision destroyed his final body at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron, that Ultron bot, he didn't truly destroy the Ultron AI itself. It just went dormant. Also, the idea is that Vision is the fusion of Ultron's AI programming in Jarvis. So there were always pieces of Ultron's original code inside Vision's programming, and we saw during WandaVision that the original Vision was reactivated by Tyler Hayward and Sword as White Vision. Scarlet Witch created Hex Vision from her memories with her chaos magic. He had all of Vision's memories from before his death in Infinity War. 
He reactivated all those inside White Vision who then flew off to stew on everything until Armor Wars in the Vision Quest series. They're also giving White Vision a new WandaVision spinoff series called Vision Quest based on that comic book storyline and the more recent Vision storyline where he created a family for himself. They also used a little bit of that for WandaVision but not a ton of it. But the basic idea is that White Vision is meant to be the original Vision. He's also basically Stark tech, that's why he's supposed to return in Armor Wars. He's basically like Tony Stark's other child. They might bring Justin Hammer back as another villain during the movie, but I'm also expecting them to introduce some other larger characters who weren't in the original Armor Wars comics story, but are Iron Man based villains. The last armor that we saw Iron Man wearing during Avengers Endgame was his Mark 85. Remember that his Infinity War armor was his Mark 50. So the idea is that during the five year time jump, he created 35 new armor suits that we only saw one of on screen. There are 34 that they just jumped over and never showed us. There was some concept art that they released for his armory that we were meant to see during Infinity War, but it sounds like they deleted that scene early in the process and just decided to skip it. We don't need to explain what happened to all those armors, they'll cover that in some other movie. And now we're getting that other movie. They'll probably also introduce some other prototype armors that he would have worn had he survived Avengers Endgame, like newer experimental armor and tech that he designed but hadn't worn yet. But the idea is that during the five year time jump, even though they made it seem like he'd permanently retired, at least briefly, from the Avengers, he continued to create new armors. That's where the Pepper Potts armor came from, like he designed that while he was designing these other 35 armors. Until the events of Spider-Man No Way Home with Doctor Strange's two spells making everyone forget Peter Parker was Spider-Man, technically he'd actually given Spider-Man control or access to most of that tech with Edith. But the second spell, wiping everyone's minds, making them forget Peter Parker was Spider-Man, also undid some of that stuff. So in the new post-Spider-Man No Way Home timeline, also post-Loki with the multiverse going crazy with everything spitting up to Kang Dynasty and the Council of Kangs, the new backstory, on Earth at least, is that damage control is now the tool of the government, which is really under the control of Thunderbolt Ross, who's going to become the President of the United States and Val, a lot of shadier people, and they're co-opting all this Stark tech, like you saw during Spider-Man No Way Home, with them taking control of a lot of Stark tech. So don't be surprised if Damage Control winds up being one of the villains during the Armor Wars series. In fact, during the original comic book Armor Wars, the US government actually uses some stolen Stark tech to create their own armor suit Iron Monger style, like a real big one, called Firepower, which Iron Man winds up having to destroy. So you can see how Thunderbolt, Ross, and Val eventually lead to a lot of this bad stuff happening during Armor Wars. In the same way that S.W.O.R.D. kind of became backdoor villains during the WandaVision series or at least people within those organizations. They kind of got into this during the Miss Marvel series. Damage Control was using the Stark Tech drones, the Edith drones, they just repainted them to look a little bit different, but they were meant to be the same drones, going after regular citizens instead of just regular criminals. Basically the idea is that during Marvel Phase 5, Thunderbolt Ross eventually becomes President of the United States, Val is now in charge of the CIA, and they're using it to turn the United States into something more akin to a police state. In paying off that line from Avengers Age of Ultron where Iron Man said, I would like to wrap the world in a suit of armor. The whole idea is that Iron Man had become paranoid and he wanted to overprotect the world at the cost of everyone's personal freedoms. And now Thunderbolt Ross and Val are just actually doing that. So they do bring Justin Hammer back during the Armor Wars series, they can just say that he's actually working for Thunderbolt Ross and Val and things start to go crazy with the armors going out of control, Ultron being released again. There are reports that Robert Downey Jr. is supposed to come back as a version of Iron Man but not as the original 616 Iron Man that died during Avengers Endgame. The rumor is that he's actually going to be a version of that 838 universe Iron Man, the alternate superior Iron Man that we didn't see during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. There were all those Tom Cruise rumors at the time, but now the report is they're just going to use Robert Downey Jr. as a version of that alternate Iron Man in different movies, but I don't know which movie they're going to bring him back in. And when he comes back, the whole idea is that they'll just be looking for revenge for the death of the Illuminati. So it'll be Robert Downey Jr. playing a twist on Iron Man in that he's seeking revenge against our normal Avengers characters. Even though technically Scarlet Witch is the one to blame for the death of all those Illuminati. The Armor War series is supposed to come after Avengers Kang Dynasty. It sounds like the way they're going to plot this out is that they're going to do things like Infinity War and then Ant-Man and the Wasp. If you remember, Ant-Man and the Wasp came out right after the snap, but they just said that most of the movie took place before the events of the snap, and they did the snap during one of the post credit scenes where the timeline caught up. 
Right now, I'm assuming most of the movies in the Disney Plus series that come between Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 will be like that. Like, they'll have a post credit scene where the timeline catches up and all of reality just collapses around them. But if you have any other questions about what's going on with Robert Downey Jr. coming back as a version of Iron Man or the Armor Wars movie, just write them below in the comments. Everyone click here for my Deadpool 3 teaser video and click here for my Mandalorian Season 3 Episode 4 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.